Hey there, ever heard of the movie Reckless? It's from 1935, and boy, does it have some stories to tell. Funny, shocking, and even sad ones. So stick around, because we've got a lot to share. Now, when you think about Reckless, is there a scene or moment that really sticks with you? Something that just won't leave your mind? And out of all the roles in the movie, which one is your absolute favorite? We're curious to know. And hey, while we're chatting, do you have any cherished memories or personal experiences related to this film? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, sit back, relax, and get ready for some fascinating tales from Reckless. Let's dive in. MGM's Reckless, released in 1935, stands as a curious flop despite its star-studded cast and renowned creators. Featuring Gene Harlow, William Powell, and Franchot Tone, alongside music by Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein, one might expect a cinematic masterpiece. However, the reality is quite different. The film unfolds as an unfunny, almost incomprehensibly bad melodrama. Harlow's portrayal of Mona Leslie, a nightclub singer and dancer, is marred by painfully obvious lip syncing and clumsy attempts at dancing. Even the lavish nightclub number, set to Kern's Reckless, fails to salvage the credibility of the production with impossible hairstyle and costume changes defying logic. Directed by Victor Fleming, the film disappoints despite the promising cast and David O. Selznick's involvement in the story, which was based on a tabloid scandal of the period. The lackluster songwriting, coupled with awkward performances, leaves viewers questioning how such talent could produce something so dreadful. Leonard Maltin's two-star rating seems overly generous in light of the film's shortcomings. For fans of Harlow, it's advisable to skip this misfire and instead enjoy her better works like Dinner at Eight, Bombshell, or Libeled Lady. The film reportedly lost money at the box office, a consequence readily apparent on screen. Despite its potential, Reckless fails to deliver, leaving audiences with a disappointing cinematic experience. In the era of black and white cinema, a particular movie from 1935 stands out for its striking fashion choices. Set against a backdrop devoid of color, the film utilizes stark contrasts and clothing to create visually captivating scenes. Delving into a real-life scandal, the movie explores themes of societal intrigue and controversy, much like other films of its time such as Brief Moment and Sing Sinner Sing. Through these productions, audiences are offered a glimpse into the complexities of scandalous events, reflecting the societal undercurrents of the 1930s. Before arriving at its final title, the film underwent several working titles, reflecting the evolving creative process. These titles, including Hard to Handle and Born Reckless, indicate the search for a name that captures the essence of the narrative. In its exploration of scandal, the movie becomes part of a broader thematic narrative present in 1930s cinema. It serves as a reminder of the film industry's ability to confront real-life events, offering audiences insight into the social dynamics of the time. In a memorable part of the 1935 movie, Granny visits Ned's office, and things get interesting when she mentions her great-grandchild. The film subtly shows how people used cloth diapers back then, as Ned deftly removes safety pins from Granny's blouse. These pins were commonly used to secure diapers on babies during that time. Granny's gesture of giving a one $500 check adds depth to the story. In today's money, that's about $33,000. Dollar it shows how important money was in the characters' lives and reflects the economic situation of the film's setting. But there's more to the story behind the scenes. Nina Mee McKinney was supposed to have a bigger role with several musical performances. However, because Gene Harlow couldn't sing or dance well, the studio cut down McKinney's part to just a small appearance. This decision shows how studios were careful about their stars' abilities and what audiences expected from them. These changes behind the scenes give us a peek into how movies were made back then. Studio bosses made big decisions to shape how the story was told on screen, and McKinney's reduced role shows how they tried to avoid any problems. The mix of practical details like safety pins and the meaning of money along with the decisions made by the studio helps us understand the story of the 1935 film better. During the filming of Reckless Tensions ran high on set. Hans Stein, a prominent actor in the cast, found himself in a rather uncomfortable situation when director Victor Fleming issued a rather unconventional instruction to Man Mountain Dean, prompting Stein to promptly exit the scene. This unexpected departure left the production team scrambling to fill the void left by Stein's absence. Eventually, wrestler Ernie Haynes stepped in, bringing his own flair to the character and injecting new energy into the production. Despite the initial hiccup, the film eventually made its way to the silver screen, dazzling audiences with its dramatic portrayal of life's twists and turns. 
Its world premiere, showing at Lois Century Theater in Baltimore, Maryland, marked a significant milestone for the cast and crew. As the lights dimmed and the opening credits rolled, anticipation filled the air, setting the stage for an unforgettable cinematic experience. Drawing inspiration from the tumultuous life of torch singer Libby Homan, the film delved into the depths of love, loss, and scandal. Homan's story, marred by tragedy and controversy, provided fertile ground for exploration, resonating with audiences on a deeply emotional level. The shocking suicide of her husband, tobacco heir Zachary Smith Reynolds, sent shockwaves through society, thrusting Homan into the spotlight and forever altering the course of her life. Initially facing the daunting prospect of murder charges, Homan weathered the storm with grace and fortitude, ultimately emerging victorious as she was cleared of all accusations. Her resilience in the face of adversity served as a beacon of hope for many, cementing her status as a symbol of strength and resilience. In the end, Reckless stands as a testament to the power of the human spirit to overcome even the darkest of circumstances. Its gripping narrative and stellar performances captivate audiences to this day, ensuring its place in cinematic history for generations to come. And thus, the tale of triumph and tragedy unfolds, immortalized on celluloid for all to see. Norman Krosna, borrowed from Paramount as a gag writer, played a pivotal role in the creation of the 1935 film. Producer David O. Selznick, despite his aversion to musicals, ventured into the genre for the second and final time with this production. A notable cinematic feat unfolds during Gene Harlow's abandoned dance routine at Joe's wedding celebration, portrayed by Rosalind Russell. To mask Harlow's limited dancing skills, a daring editing technique is employed. The camera subtly dissolves between the feet of Harlow's dance double and her upper body, creating an illusion of seamless execution. Additional distractions, in the form of random extras strategically placed in the foreground, divert the audience's attention from the choreography. In navigating the challenges of musical filmmaking and addressing Harlow's dance limitations, the creators of the 1935 production demonstrated innovation and resourcefulness. The film faced a disappointing outcome at the box office, resulting in a loss of $125,000 according to studio records. Racehorses were a prevalent subplot during that era, also appearing in other productions like The Three Stooges. Luxury yachts shared a similar fate, famously portrayed in Some Like It Hot. Several writers contributed to the script, with only P.J. Wolfson receiving credit for the final version, despite involvement from figures like Joseph L. Mankiewicz and Philip Berry.